Hey everyone, and welcome to our Get Started Guide for an Assassination Rogue in BFA Patch 8.0.1. Assassination is currently the most competitive rogue spec, and in this guide we'll be going over everything you need to know to get an edge on your opponents in all aspects of PvP. Let's start by taking a look at what talents you should be using. In your first tier, Master Poisoner is the clear winner. Not only does it provide you with the largest DPS increase of all three choices, it also has the added benefit of increasing the potency of your wound poison, making it even harder for healers to deal with your damage. On top of that, it makes your crippling poison apply a 60% slow, something that your team can take advantage of to kite defensively, or to simply have an easier time sticking to your target. The only other real option in this tier you could consider is elaborate planning. While it does provide more damage in a very short period of time, most 3's games are unlikely to end in the opener, and your sustained pressure as an assassination rogue is usually a big part of how you're able to set up kills. You could consider taking elaborate planning when playing double DPS 2's, like Rogue Mage. In your second tier, Subterfuge should always be chosen. It both increases your damage and your crowd control potential. During your Subterfuge buff, abilities will act as if used from stealth, meaning that Garot will deal increased damage and silence your target. It also won't incur its cooldown, which means you can grow to multiple targets, something that increases both your ability to spread pressure across multiple targets, and control players by silencing them. And speaking of control, you'll also be able to use Cheap Shot during your subterfuge buff. This means you can make plays like Cheap Shotting a healer so your mage can polymorph them, Cheap Shotting the second DPS so they can't interrupt your mage, and grow silencing your target into a full kidney. Your third tier is a little more complex. You have two great options in Marked for Death and Vigor. Starting with Marked for Death, this talent plays a huge part in your ability to burst targets down. This should be played in comps where you intend to set up crowd control with your team and burst someone down in a stun. Marked for Death would allow you to kidney shot a healer, generate 4-5 combo points, and then use 2 envenoms back to back. This combined with the System Shock PvP talent can allow you to deal crazy amounts of burst in a very short amount of time. However, if you're playing a comp that requires you to deal maximum PvE damage and isn't trying to kill in setups, Vigor will provide you with more overall damage. This will generally be the best talent in matchups where you're trying to keep bleeds up on multiple targets and slowly win the game. Just keep in mind that Rogue Mage is the Asa Rogue meta right now, meaning you should be using Mark for Death most of the time. While your fourth tier has three viable options, Elusiveness is the best one if you want to play your class to its full potential. You will rarely see top rogues spec out of elusiveness. While it's more difficult to pre-faint stuns now, the damage reduction is too high to ignore. If you're playing versus a comp where you expect a very long, drawn out game, leeching poison can be considered. However, in the current meta, there really are not any matchups where leeching poison should be preferred over elusiveness. Finally, if you're a more inexperienced rogue and want a passive increase to your survival, you can opt for cheat death. Note that we don't really recommend using this talent and you won't find any top rogues using it. Your 5th tier comes with one default option in Internal Bleeding. This talent provides you with the most sustained damage in this tier. Both Prey on the Weak and Iron Wire are nerfed in PvP. Prey on the Weak is only a 5% damage increase and Iron Wire only increases your silence by 1 second. While both talents could have their uses, you can never go wrong by specking into Internal Bleeding every single game. In your 6th tier, we again only have one real option. Toxic Blade is by far the best option in this tier. While it doesn't do too much damage itself, it plays a huge part in your burst by increasing the damage of your Envenom, something that's even more prominent when playing with Mark for Death. In your final tier, we have another easy choice in Poison Bomb. It's simply a passive increase to your damage that you don't have to think about. The only other option you can consider in this tier is Hidden Blades. If you're facing a team you expect to stack up all game, Hidden Blades can be combined with Flying Daggers, allowing to more easily cleave down their entire team. A great example of when you could do this is against Resto Shamans playing with the Spirit Link talent. With your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at your PvP talents. Starting with your Trinket Choice, Gladiator's Medallion should be taken when playing every race but human. Rogues can die very easily in stuns, so it's extremely important that you're able to break out of at least one stun every two minutes in order to avoid dying too easily. If you're playing as a human, Relentless becomes an excellent choice. While you will only be able to trinket out of a stun every 3 minutes, Relentless alone can go a long way in surviving kill attempts and also helps reduce all other CC that's used on you. 
You can still play with a gladiator's medallion as a human in order to trink it out of stuns every 90 seconds, but Relentless will generally be the better option. Next up, let's take a look at Deadly Brew, a PvP talent you should always take. This talent is part of what makes Assassination Rogues so strong. Being able to apply a healing reduction to targets is one of the easiest ways to increase the pressure a comp can apply. If you've played Outlaw lately and noticed that your damage gets healed through pretty easily, you'll see that change once you play some Assassination. Next we have two talents you should almost always take. Starting with System Shock, the current Assassination Rogue meta is to play with a Frost Mage and set up kills. This means you'll mostly be playing with Mark for Death, and System Shock will be a passive increase to your burst damage. You'll also be buffing the damage of System Shock when you burst by first using Toxic Blade. Following that up with a 5 combo point in Venom when possible, and another Mark for Death in Venom will result in a ton of extra damage from System Shock. On top of the damage it deals, it also applies a massive 90% slow, something that not only helps keep your target locked down and vulnerable to your damage, but can also be used defensively if you ever need to peel for your team. The other talent you should almost always take is Smoke Bomb. Again, because the current Assassination Rogue meta is to play with a Frost Mage and set up kills, Smoke Bomb is simply another way to set up a kill. It can be used to either extend a CC chain, or to do a go on someone without a trinket. Finally, let's go over some of your more optional talents. Assassination Rogues have access to a ton of PvP talents that are all super useful in their own specific ways. First we have Flying Daggers, something we mentioned earlier that can be combined with Hidden Blades to make it easier to cleave down an entire team, usually a Resto Shaman playing with the Spirit Link talent. Creeping Venom can be taken as an additional DPS talent, however its damage is rather lackluster at the moment and can rarely be warranted over Smoke Bomb in any 3s matchup. Maneuverability is a great defensive option that can be taken to assist in your survival against comps that you're struggling to live against. Death from above can be taken versus mages if you want some increased mobility. Neurotoxin can be taken in some extremely rare situations, such as when playing a comp that wants to tunnel a Disc Priest as a way to shut down their ability to spam Power Word Shield. Mind Numbing Poison is another talent that can be taken in very rare situations when facing a caustic leave that you expect to play a really long game against. Before we move on, here are some common builds you can expect to run. Deadly Brew plus System Shock plus Smoke Bomb will generally be your go-to build for most 3s matchups when playing Rogue Mage Healer. Deadly Brew plus System Shock plus Creeping Venom can be a good build for matchups where you don't get much value out of Smoke Bomb, something that may be especially true in 2s. First and foremost, despite its nerf, you want to get your hands on one Shroud of Suffocation trait as soon as possible. Although the damage increase on your Grote isn't as high anymore, it still gives you two additional combo points, which is super valuable, allowing you to immediately apply a high combo point rupture, or just quickly get to five combo points for a kidney shot. As for your other two traits, you have a couple options. For assassination specific traits, Twist the Knife provides the highest single target damage increase while Scent of Blood will give you the highest damage increase if you intend to spread your pressure. If you prefer a more RNG way to increase your damage during your kill attempts, you can also opt for some of the generic traits like Dagger in the Back, Laser Matrix, and Tidal Surge. Our pick of the three is Tidal Surge, as it can go a long way to scoring a kill during your kill windows if it procs while you're bursting someone down. Also note that there are some really good second and third ring traits, especially defensively, such as Azerite Fortification and Shrouded Mantle. So, be sure to take those into consideration when choosing which pieces of Azerite gear you're going to use. While the stat priority in PvE is Haste, Crit, Mastery, Versatility, Crit damage is nerfed in PvP, meaning you only crit for 150% instead of 200%. This reduces its value and leaves us with the following stat priority in PvP. Haste, Mastery, Crit, Versatility. Despite the nerf to crit in PvP, we still value it over versatility, as critting Mutilate or Fan of Knives will generate additional combo points. Alliance players will want to be either Human, Night Elf, or Dark Iron Dwarf. Each come with their own strengths. Human allows you to play with Relentless and still have a way to break out of stuns, something that's incredibly valuable when playing against other rogues. You can also play with a Gladiator's Medallion to trinket out of stuns every 90 seconds. Night Elf is a great option for Assassination Rogues, as Shadow Melt gives you an additional way to re-stealth and apply more high damage in Groats. If you only care about max damage, the Night Elf could be for you. Dark Iron Dwarf can be an excellent choice against specific comps like Jungle Cleave. 
it gives you a great defensive tool that doubles up as a way to increase your burst damage. Horde players will want to stick to Orc. It's hands down the best race due to its passive stun reduction that can be paired with the Gladiator's Medallion and a racial that can be used to increase your burst damage on demand. Overall, Orc stands out as one of the best races, but it's not far ahead of the Alliance races, which each have their own strengths and excel in different matchups. The final part of this guide will go over how to deal optimal damage and burst. First things first, Deadly Poison and Crippling Poison will need to be reapplied at the start of every arena match. Now, the general overview of how you deal single target damage looks like this. Build combo points with Mutilate. Maintain Garrote and Rupture on your target. Spend additional combo points on Envenom. As for multi-target damage, use Fan of Knives to build combo points if two plus targets are stacked, otherwise Mutilate. Maintain Garrote and Rupture on at least two targets. Note that the short cooldown on Garrote means you should try to maintain it on three targets if possible. Keep Deadly Poison on as many targets as possible and use Throw Knife if needed. If you're playing with Creeping Venom, you have the option of using one combo point in Venoms to keep Creeping Venom up on everyone. Remember it automatically refreshes when they move. Finally, spend any additional combo points on Venom, but remember to prioritize keeping up as many ruptures as you can. Try to refresh Rupture when it's at or below 6 seconds remaining. Next, let's take a look at how you should burst. Basically, you want to line up Kidney Shot with Toxic Blade. Start by ensuring you have your bleeds up. Then kidney shot your target. Use Vendetta and Toxic Blade. Then Mutilate to get 4-5 to five combo points. Use Envenom. Then Mark for Death and Venom again. So, what does your ideal opener look like? Remember, you may need to assist your team with CC by cheap shotting and or garroting off targets. Once you're ready to open on your kill target, do the following. Garrote. Rupture. Mutilate. Mutilate. Kidney shot. Vendetta. Toxic Blade, Mutilate for 4-5 to five combo points, Envenom, Mark for Death, Envenom. Alright everyone, that about does it for our Assassination Rogue Get Started Guide. We hope you enjoyed this one and are looking forward to our Assassination Rogue Playstyle Guide coming out early next month. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.